Okay. So good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me during the dinner time after the plenary. Um, my name is Heidi Thompson, and today I'm going to be sharing um, some of my PhD research on uh, developing multi-word expression knowledge and use. And I'll be introducing a fluency workshop that I used as um, my, inter my intervention method for this study. Um, I'm currently based in Sapporo at Hokusei Gakuen University, Junior College Department, and I um, recently completed my PhD at Victoria University in Wellington under the guidance of Avril, Dr. Avril Coxhead and Dr. Frank Bowers. Okay. Um, so, uh, speaking fluency is a common language learning goal for our um, language learners, and um, it's linked with the use of multi-word expressions. It has been linked with the use of multi-word expressions in, through various studies. Um, and when I say multi-word expressions, I'm referring to a common type of formulaic language these are frequent, familiar word sequences, which provide uh, quick and predictable chunks of language to express meaning. And uh, when uh, speakers use these uh, multi-word expressions, it frees up working memory to construct more complex messages with less effort around those uh, safe multi-word expressions. So uh, for example, um, in my study, I looked at four-word multi-word expressions, and examples of those would be, I think I will, or would you like to? So you can see that these are the, the building blocks of um, our sentences, really um, basic, really frequent, and uh, potentially very useful for language learners. So why teach multi-word expressions? There, as I said before, their use has been linked to increased speaking fluency. Um, and multi-word expressions are often composed of highly frequent words. And also, they can appear semantically incomplete. So the combination of highly frequent words and incomplete uh, chunks results in these multi-word expressions being non-salient. They don't stand out to language learners. Uh, you know, new content words will stand out much um, larger and brighter in the language learner's eyes than these uh, very um, non-salient word sequences. So it's important to help our second language learners to notice these sequences so that they can then learn them. Um, without some kind of noticing intervention, they, they may not notice them and therefore not learn them. So my research question uh, that I'm going to talk about today is to what extent can classroom intervention develop learners' knowledge, use, and fluency with common multi-word expressions, such as, I think I will, and would you like to? So um, my multi-word expressions for this study were four-word expressions, and I used four-word four words in order to keep the expressions comparable and reduce overlapping. And in previous studies, um, four-word multi-word expressions have also been used, so it's using precedent there. Uh, these multi-word expressions came from three classroom dialogue models that I was using in my classroom. And uh, they were made up of high-frequency words, or 97% of the words in the um, multi-word expressions were high frequency words and um, the frequency was checked against the spoken subcorpus of uh, COCA, uh, which is corpus of contemporary American English. So examples in context, I had um, three themed units that we worked through in the intervention and um, they were a cafe theme, a directions theme and a hotel theme. And this was based off um, uh, a questionnaire that I ran with a previous cohort about where they thought they would want to use English in the future. So um, these scenarios were 
um, chosen because it seemed that these would be useful to them in their future English speaking life. So um, you can see in context there, what are you going to get? So that what are you going, with those four words underlined, that's the multi-word expression in that sentence. And then you should see the museum on the right. Again, um, the multi-word expression is underlined. And you can see just from that, that it doesn't stand out as anything special. So uh, this is a list of 30 multi-word expressions. And um, now I'm going to introduce what I did in my uh, experimental condition. So um, we had a fluency workshop and these fluency workshop activities were in order to notice and practice using multi-word expressions. And the activities that I'm going to introduce now um, were based off a study that Wood uh, reported in 2009 with just one learner. Um, and then I, used that model uh, to, that model was a monologue model and I wanted to look at dialogue. So um, I adjusted those activities and um, used these 10 activities in this um, study. And these were based off a previous study that I reported in 2018. So I'm going to run through these now each activity because I think um, as teachers this might be useful information for us and what can we use in our classroom. So um, the first activity is listening to a model dialogue and then answering just questions. So we'd have a, a model dialogue that looks a bit like this and um, the students would listen to it and then answer just questions such as what are the people talking about and what are they looking at. And they do that in partners, so they ask each other those questions. And then um, the second activity is multi-word expression instruction. So um, we would, um, I would give the students a transcript of the model dialogue and then ask them to go through and underline the multi-word expressions as I introduce them and take notes of their meaning. So I would give them, because all of the, students in my class were uh, speakers of Japanese, I would give them that Japanese translation and then also some kind of meta information about the, the multi-word expression. For example, in what situation would you use this? Um, so we've got here the top one, what would you like? So I've got the translation and then saying that's a question about choice. Okay, and then the Japanese translation of that as well. Okay. So that was the multi-word expression, they'd go through an instruction, they'd go through and highlight that in their text. And then um, we did, the third activity was shadowing. So um, the idea of this is that you, the students, they, we were all in a computer classroom, they all had their own um, computers and headsets so that they would put on their headset and listen to the audio on their own headset um, and try to say the words just after the speaker almost at the same time um, in a shadowing exercise and do that four times uh, in the classroom. And the um, kind of motivation of that is to improve the pronunciation and rhythm. Not so focused on meaning, more focused on the procedural knowledge of actually using, using it. Um, and then the fourth activity was dictogloss. This is um, uh, activity where the learners would listen to the audio on the classroom audio and the first time they would just listen and then they'd listen a second time and take notes of the words that they could hear and then a third time and take notes a fourth time and take notes and then after that fourth time they would get together in a small group and share their notes and try to reconstruct the text together. The fifth exercise was mingle jigsaw so um, I would give each learner a um, multi-word expression printed on a small piece of paper, hand them out, and they were instructed to write, them the, write down the phrase on a piece of paper that they had, and then return, I would get the pieces of paper back to me. They were instructed to memorize their phrase, 
and then stand up and walk around the room and uh, share their phrase with different people, like exchange verbally their phrases. So when they exchange, they'd remember their partner's phrase and then go back to the desk and write that down. And the idea was that um, they'd hold that phrase in their memory for a very short amount of time before they wrote it down on their desk. The sixth uh, activity was role play train. So just a basic role play. Uh, they were allowed to use their transcript to um, do the role play, but encouraged to look up from the transcript and make eye contact with their partner. So on the class screens, I would show something that looks a bit like this, some instructions about the role play and um, also the multi-word expressions that I would quite like them to use in their role play. And they would do this uh, with different partners. So we'd start off uh, all lined up parallel and they'd do the role play with one partner and then the lines would move in opposite directions so they'd get a new partner for the next time. And then again, they'd do it three times in one role and then we'd switch the roles and they'd do it again with um, three other people. We'd then go to a decreasing time role play. And in this uh, activity, they were not supposed to use notes. So we put the notes away and um, they had a time limit starting with 1.4 minutes and they'd do that role play. These um, expressions would be shown on the screen. So even though they don't have notes, they can still refer to the expressions, really encouraging them to use them. And then again, they'd change partners and do it for uh, lesser time and then change partners again and do it for eventually one minute and then we'd switch roles and do it all over again. So um, in total, they're doing it six, well, three times in each role. And then after we'd done those role plays, we'd do a recording of the role play. So they'd sit down again at their desk and um, with their partner, they would record a role play on Moodle using Audacity. And um, they'd introduce themselves at the start of the role play and do the role play, change roles, do it again, and then um, they'd export that file, save it and upload it to Moodle. This activity was technically challenging for several and quite time consuming. Uh, then the uh, number nine activity was to reflect on the recording. So I gave learners a, um, a print, a sheet, worksheet where they would uh, respond to these reflection questions. So they'd listen back to the recording on Moodle and then they'd rate themselves about their pausing behavior, their um, pronunciation, and um, whether they were speaking kind of word by word or more phrase by phrase, and then the things that they did well, the things that they thought they could improve on. And the final uh, activity in this Fluency Workshop activity set was to do a related situation free role play. So the idea is that they would talk about something that um, is a similar scenario. So the scenario introduced just now is a cafe. So um, a related situation would be perhaps um, going to a clothing store and deciding what you want to buy or a convenience store and talking about what you want to buy with your friend. And they were encouraged to use those multi-word expressions in that new conversation. And for this uh, related situation role play, they got one minute and one minute prior to doing the role play to kind of plan it out using uh, Japanese, using the L1 with their partner so that um, they had an idea of what they were doing when they started. The control condition, these um, students, uh, this group of students, they provide a baseline to computer learning from their intervention and they didn't have any deliberate exposure to the multi-word expressions that were being explicitly taught in the experimental group. However, of course, they had exposure in the pretest. So they, they did a pretest and there was some exposure there. But during the actual uh, classroom time, they didn't have that. Now, the control condition followed a linked skills um, syllabus and they were doing engineering themes. My students were all engineering majors. So in this class, we had activities such as speed reading and um, then listening and filling in missing words, uh, reading an email, writing an email, then describing uh, design from an email to a partner. So 
um, they were all linked and the idea with linked skills is that you use the similar vocabulary throughout different skills of reading, writing, speaking and listening and it builds up a certain amount of fluency through those that re repetition. Uh, so my participants uh, were second and third year Japanese university students, engineering majors. They had to complete two English courses as part of their degree. And my experimental condition students came from communication English classes and the control condition came from general English classes. Uh, they were informed about the study and, um, and those who consented where their data was included in the study. Uh, the majority of them reported a TOEIC score between um, 2 by 5 and 600, so kind of um, intermediate A2, B1, beginner intermediate level. Um, so the method, I wanted to measure the uptake of 30 multi-word expressions before and after the six-week intervention. So um, I had three uh, tests that I'm going to report on today. First was um, their knowledge of multi-word expressions, which was tested through a queued recall test. The second was their ability to use multi-word expressions, which was uh, measured through a dialogue task. And that same di dialogue task was used to measure their overall fluency. And this was done before and after the intervention to look at the changes that may have happened over those six weeks. So for productive knowledge, uh, the queued recall test pre and post, um, it was done on Moodle and you can see here an example of what it would have looked like on the screen. So they had each word uh, get with the first initial words given and then a Japanese translation to guide their answering. So they'd fill in those missing words. They are 30 questions and they had 10 minutes to complete it. Um, and you'll see here on the left, the um, experimental condition uh, learners were on the left. So um, they had a gain from the pretest to the post-test of um, eight, just over eight words, and by eight expressions, and no, yes, eight expressions. And from the control group, they had a, a gain of just over two expressions. And that difference between the gain scores for the experimental and control groups was significant with a large effect. Um, then looking at the use of multi-word expressions in conversation, this is the dialogue task, pre and post. Uh, this was used to measure the, the use of the multi-word expressions in conversation, also their fluency changes. Um, there were less participants uh, data used for this part of the research because I wanted to reduce as much variance as possible. So I required that they had the same partner, speaking partner for the pre and post intervention dialogue and that they played the same role in the pre and post uh, dialogue and also that the recording was audible. So after all of that was taken into account, we had about uh, 46 participants in the, for the spoken data. And to count the use of multi-word expressions in the dialogues, I used ant -conc concordance search. And uh, the use of all four words was rare. So I counted partial use to reveal that developing skill. So each word was scored one point that was used in a target sequence. So first I searched for four words, sequences, and then three and two. And you can see examples here of how I would grade it. So is on the right was with four points, is on the two, is on two, and then also if there was like a word in the middle on right, there's uh, two points. Uh, so the use of, uh, oh gosh, my time, <laughs> speed up. Um, the use of multi-word expressions in dialogue, uh, there was diversity within the participants. It was, there was a non-normal distribution, so we used uh, Man Whitney here to look at the difference between the use of multi-word expressions, and there was a significant difference between the two groups. Um, the role play looked something like this. And the speech rate that um, was measured from that dialogue task, uh, from pre to post test, there was a difference in the experimental group, not in the control group. However, when they were compared against each other, there were no significant difference changes 
in fluency between those two groups. There were also no significant differences in pre to post fluency change in other measures as well. However, there were positive correlations between uh, fluency measures and use of multi-word expressions. So positive correlations between mean length of runs and the use of multi-word expressions, that was the strongest correlation. And then speech rate, phonation time ratio and articulation rate. So my research question, to what extent does the classroom intervention uh, develop learners knowledge, use and fluency with the multi-word expressions? There was good development of multi-word expression knowledge. We saw that in the queued recall test. Good development of multi-word expression use in conversation. And however, there was incomplete development of fluency using multi-word expressions. There were limitations with this uh, setup. So there was no compulsion to use multi-word expressions in the dialogue task. So there's a possibility that there was more ability present than was displayed. Also, the role play instructions were complex, which led to pausing and there could have been variations caused by social conventions and conversation direction between the pretest and the post-test. Directions for further research, um, it would be nice to replicate this intervention with a read aloud test to measure fluency with multi-word expressions um, that would require that they actually use them um, and we'd see uh, a difference in, in how they used all of them as opposed to just what they chose to use. Um, and then also it'd be interesting to replicate with higher proficiency learners or different L1s. Teaching implications is that explicit noticing and practice of multi-word expressions is beneficial. Uh, activity flows that encourage reuse of multi-word expressions are beneficial. Uh, improved knowledge and use of multi-word expressions can be expected with this kind of intervention. However, improved fluency with multi-word expressions is unlikely within classroom time constraints. So this was a six week study and, and that um, fluency uh, comparison between the control and uh, experimental group was not significant. Thank you very much for listening to my uh, presentation and I welcome questions. Are there any questions? Hi, should I, can I? Go? Yes, yes, please. Just, just a short advice. I also uh, tried to improve the fluency of the students and I worked with voice recorders. Um, yeah. Get rid of all the trouble with Audacity, Moodle, whatever, you know, you just say it's the voice recorder, they're easy to use, they're intuitive, and they record their stuff, and then I take it. You need several uh, if you have a larger group, but it worked really fine, you know. I have 3, 3, 30,000 recordings, and the voice recorders fell twice. <laughs> wow. Falling twice, so it, it's really in large groups it, it works well yeah so by voice recorders do you mean what 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 do you mean uh, separate um separate uh, a, a voice recorder really this like little little uh tape recorder type <laughs> so for me, because i did not want to have all the trouble with uh, maybe it now goes better but before the pandemic you know yeah. On, on with audacity first the thing and then Moodle or whatever. For mm. me. Okay, just. Oh, so. thank you, thank you. <laughs> Naheen, do you have a question? Hey, thanks for the introduction of the ten different tasks. They're they're pretty useful. Um, I was just wondering how did you divide that up over the six week intervention? So were you using like two activities in one week, or is it just one in each of the lessons for each week? Or you know, how did you divide that up? Yeah, so I had um, I had three units, and um, it generally took me two lessons to get through one unit. So the uh, activities were kind of split over those ten activities were split over two lessons. You had like two one hundred minute lessons, and then kind of fit that into the unit. Is that right? Yeah, ninety. Yeah, two two ninety minute unit. Uh, two ninety minute lessons. And Sorry, I can get through one one. Unit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Two 90 minute lessons and you can get through the 10 tasks, the 10 and, activities. And do you need to do it in that specific 
order or do you think you can just kind of pick and choose or what would you think? Uh, I think the order builds familiarity to get to those freer using freer speaking activities so the order um the order I think is useful <laughs> and you'd have to think carefully about um rearranging it I think yeah thank you yeah thank you thank you for your question Any other questions? I would like to ask uh, something. You said you uh, you put it down to four word uh, multi word expressions, but in one case, like you have very often, like the two is like mandatory, so it will be a five word expression. In, in really, um, I don't remember. It's um, Something with a two. What would you like to get? Or I don't know. Ah, so some, yes. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's and yeah. Did you that you, you just cut it down to have it like four words and but in in actual it could be like five or even six or I don't know. Yeah, so for the um for the teaching of the expressions, mm. they were in those four words um mm sequences but of course they were taught in context of the sentences that they mm. appeared in so yeah like you say the um uh, I think it was in particular what would you like to and uh what would you like they can mm -hmm. yeah yeah they can overlap there so um yeah I, I think that would be quite an interesting kind of post hoc thing to investigate like if, if that particular sequence is better has a better uptake than the others because it probably had a, a little bit more uh students had more encounters with it because it appeared mm. twice I guess in the um materials but um yeah in terms of like counting for the analysis um if it was used like when they spoke it if they said what would you like to then that was just counted as one multi-word expression of five words mm -hmm. yeah so um does that answer your question uh yeah i would like to ask more but we don't have time so it's okay, okay. thank you okay Maybe yeah, I'll, time, I'll, yeah i'll be in i'll be in the breakout room i guess and yeah. <laughs> we can talk about it more if you want to yeah. no i cannot i have the abm after that <laughs> okay all right all right sorry, thank you sorry, very yeah. much <laughs> yeah but maybe at another time or another conference yeah. we can talk yeah thank you sure, very thank you. good very nice talk yeah thank you okay thank you very much for your presentation dr heidi and let's offer a round of applause for dr heidi who presented today Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Yeah, and you may continue the conversation in the continued presentation discussions room. I will send the link to everyone so that everyone can attend the discussion. Now I send the link and you can access the link and you can go to the room, which is room 17 to continue discussion. And please connect with our associate members who support this conference. and the SIGs through both the conference site and Discord server. Again, thank you very much for your participation today. Thank you. Thank you.